the recording. Um, so hello one more time to all of you for the second preliminary meeting of the TextWin project. Uh, today we have a very interesting agenda. Uh, we are we will have today the focus on Tuscany and focus on Armenia to what's considered the peculiarities, uh, peculiarities and uh, the specificities of the textile sector in Italy uh, and Armenia. Uh, later on, we will have very quick exercise. I hope we will be we will manage uh, with the timing based on the previous your responses with sliders that you gave to us. We would like to make a very quick exercise in order to see how uh, we can plan our cooperation and our uh, and um, our uh, collaboration. And then we will have a very quick presentation of the Ita one Italian and one Armenian uh, companies. So I would like to ask, uh, I would like to go to the first point on the thematic focus, challenges and peculiarities of the making business in Armenia and Italy in the textile uh, sector. At this point, I would like to ask um, um, who would like to start? We have our PIN partner and we also have ERDSC partners. So probably maybe uh, we can start with the PIN if you don't yeah. mind. Yes, uh, Antonio Petrella, one of our researchers, has prepared a video to present uh, uh, the textile sector in Italy with a deep side to the Italian district. If uh, Irina, could you launch the video, please, just for uh, a technical problem? If you can launch the video I sent you, it is better for us. I'm on my way. <laughs> so please confirm me that you can see uh, my screen. And now I will start, uh, um, wait a second. Okay. The perfect cooperation. <laughs> so please, can uh, do you see my screen? Yes. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear the video? Hello, I'm Antonio Petrella and I'm a researcher at BIN. In this uh, presentation, I will explain the main characteristics of the Italian artist. Can you hear it? Yes, I can hear it. You... Perfect. So yes. please enjoy. You see LF Industries and the Prato Textile District. Um, in Italy, the textile, clothing, leather, and footwear industries uh, represent a strategic sector in the national uh, manufacturing, representing 8% uh, of all Italian manufacturing. The sector with the highest turnover is uh, clothing, about uh, 38%, followed by the textile sector that represents uh, one quarter of the turnover produced by Italian TCLF uh, companies. If we consider the textile sector, it is possible to note that uh, most of the production value was uh, created in the subsector manufacture of other textiles. The weaving of the textiles, which constitutes almost 29% of the entire textile sector, is the only subsector that uh, uh, has grown in the last 10 years. The subsectors finishing of textiles and preparation spinning of textile fibers have had the greatest decrease of production value over the last 10 years. In Italy, most of the companies in TCRF industries belong to the clothing sector, about 52%, while almost a quarter belong to the textile sector, almost 22%. The footwear and leather, 13% companies, have lower numbers. Almost 81% uh, um, of companies in Italy were micro-enterprises from 0 to 9 person employed, a percentage lower than the European average. 
which stood at almost 85%. This is because in Italy there are more SMES enterprises than in the general European economic fabric. In terms of size, uh, there are only uh, 132 large Italian companies, uh, constituting for only 0.2% of the total companies in the TCLF industries. Almost half of Italian employment in the TCLF industries is located in the north of Italy, almost 49%, uh, uh, more than a third in, a thir in um, central Italy, 35%, uh, and the rest in the, the south of Italy. In particular, uh, a quarter of the employees in the TCLF industries work in the northwest of Italy, uh, almost 25%, especially in uh, Lombardy and uh, Piedmont. In the, the northeast of Italy, which represents almost uh, uh, 23% of all national employment in TCLF industries, the region with the highest rate of workers are Veneto and Emilia Romagna. In uh, central Italy, uh, there is more than one third of uh, um, TCLF uh, employment, and uh, in particular, Tuscany represents, uh, represents 23% uh, percent of the whole national employment, and uh, uh, Tuscany is the Italian region with the highest number of uh, employees uh, in the TCLF industries. In particular, almost a quarter of the entire uh, Italian uh, labor force in the TCLF uh, sector is in Tuscany. Another high percentage of employees uh, is in Marche, and in the south uh, Italy, there is only uh, almost 16% uh, uh, of TCLF employment. Uh, half uh, of all textile employees work in the northwest, uh, yeah. followed by the central Italy. The five most representative, representative region of Italy, uh, in terms of number of employees uh, belonging to TCLF industries, uh, are summarized in this table. Uh, Tuscany, Lombardy and Veneto are uh, the Italian regions with the highest number of uh, employees uh, in the TCLF uh, uh, sector. The geographical location of the employment for the textile mm -hmm. sector focuses uh, almost uh, uh, 84 percent of the workforce in Lombardy, Tuscany, Piedmont, Veneto and uh, Emilia Romagna. According to uh, general opinion, um, probably influenced by fashion market, uh, workers in TCLF industries are mostly young workers, sometimes with no experience and little training. However, uh, analyzing the data, uh, there is a big difference between this perception and the reality in the labor force of the Italian TCLF industries, where the average age of workers is very high. Young workers from uh, 15 to 24 years uh, constitute only 4.8%, uh, um, an average absolutely in line with the European average. Uh, finally, uh, almost two thirds of the labor force in the TCLF uh, industries belongs to the age group from 25 and uh, 49 uh, years, which is slightly higher than the European averages over um, 50 years old, which is slightly lower than the European percentage. Um, the group uh, age from 15 to uh, 24 years uh, is larger in the leather and footwear sector 
than the other sectors. The group page from uh, 25 to uh, 49 years is more conspicuous in the clothing sector, while the group age from uh, 50 to uh, 64 uh, years uh, is broader in uh, the textile industry. Um, almost uh, 138,000 workers uh, over uh, uh, 15 were uh, registered in Italy compared to the totally 420,000 workers in the TCLF sector. Uh, this uh, indicates uh, that within the TCLF uh, industries, uh, one third of the total number of employees uh, is uh, over 50 years, uh, and therefore, in the coming years, uh, they um, will be will be closed uh, to the retirement. In, text, in textiles, uh, workers with uh, a medium level of education predominate, uh, almost uh, uh, 47%. In leather and footwear, workers with a low level of education predominate, uh, uh, almost um, 57%. In the clothing, uh, has the highest number of uh, workers with a high level of uh, education. In textile, the percentage of the clerks and technicians and the associate professional are higher, while um, clothing has more professional and service uh, workers, while leather and footwear has less uh, elementary occupation than the two subsector. The craft and the related uh, uh, trade workers category is also conspicuous in, in the clothing and the textile sectors. The group, plant and uh, machinery operators and uh, assemblers uh, is very yeah. present in the textile sector, uh, slightly more than uh, the European uh, average. In Prato, uh, Prato is uh, strategically located because uh, it's in the heart of uh, Italy. The area of the Prato Textile District includes 12 municipalities, municipalities um, Prato, Cantagallo, Carmignano, Monte Murlo, Poggia Cagliano, Vagliano, Vernio, Agliana, Montale, Quarrata, Calenzano and Campi Bisenzio and uh, covers an area of uh, uh, 700 uh, square kilometers and a population of more than uh, 300,000 inhabitants. Prato is uh, considered one of the biggest industrial uh, districts in Italy, uh, the most important textile center in uh, Europe and one of the world's most important hubs for the production of uh, yarns and uh, woolen uh, fabrics. In Prato, the textile and the clothing sector accounts for over 80% uh, of production. Moreover, the remaining 20% of the district's production fabric um, is linked to the textile sector. In uh, 2021, uh, there are uh, um, almost uh, 80,000 enterprises in Prato, the street of which um, 1,800 in textile, 4,400 in clothing sector. Prato is uh, uh, the first uh, Italian city for uh, employees uh, in the textile sector and uh, it is also the first Italian city for employees in the clothing uh, sector. The companies in the, the textile district uh, produce uh, fabrics for the clothing uh, industry uh, furnishing uh, textiles, uh, yarns for the knitting uh, industry, uh, knitted products uh, and garments, uh, uh, non-wovens and spe special textiles for industrial uh, uses. 
in uh, particular the textile uh, district is a key hub for fast fashion and made in italy garments a very articulate system of production uh, can be found within the district distinguished by the raw materials used for example uh, wool uh, cotton uh, artificial and synthetic uh, fabrics uh, the processes, uh, combed and carded spinning, uh, orthogonal uh, weaving and knitting uh, and finishing, and the market uh, segments from luxury to mass uh, consumption. And then the uses, uh, um, for example, clothing, knitwear and uh, furnishing. Other support sectors uh, developed uh, within the district uh, concern design, uh, creation and styling, uh, product marketing, organizational and strategic consulting, and uh, ICT. Um, a strong uh, future of uh, Prato's industrial system is uh, its relations with international markets. The textile sector exports more than half of this production and has trade relations with more than 100 uh, countries. In the second quarter of 2022, after two years of the crisis caused by COVID-19, uh, in the textile sector, there was uh, an increase in the level of the production of uh, almost 12% uh, uh, compared to 2021, uh, especially in yarn production and the orders from abroad. Um, apparel and knitwear production also grew on pre-COVID levels that were already particularly high. Analyzing the distribution of people employed in 2021 in the district of Prato, the most recent uh, surveys report that the garment and the textile industries are still the most hiring sectors in the territory. Uh, with uh, uh, almost 30% uh, of total hires uh, in uh, 2021. Well, my presentation is over and uh, I greet you from Prato. Ciao. <laughs>so that was the video a presentation of the textile sector in uh, in uh, italy so now i would like to give the floor to our armenian partners uh, to present uh, the textile sector in uh, armenia later on we will have uh, a session for the questions and also you can do these through the platform so please the floor is yours Oops. Would you like me to share your presentation or you prefer to share it by yourself? Uh, Irina, yeah, if, if uh, okay, can you please share? Yeah, sure. Just please let me know later on where I need to when I need to click to to, to change. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, my name is Armine. I will present textile industry of Armenia in a, just in a few words, uh, specifically prepared for this uh, event, for this uh, matchmaking event. Well, yes, next. Wait a second. Okay, sorry. Okay. Well, uh, Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so starting uh, with some general information about Armenia, population of Armenia, 3 million, approximately 3 million people. So 29 square kilo, uh, thousand uh, square kilometers, parliamentary republic and the rest. So uh, major uh, macroeconomic indicators. So GDP, 13.9 uh, billion USD. GDP growth uh, for 2021 was 5 Point seven uh, percent, and GDP per capita uh, four thousand six hundred seventy-nine USD. Uh, so this is some, some general uh, info about Armenian economic overview. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, Armenian, uh, well, uh, mainly, uh, uh, well, Armenian economy, it's uh, like a free exchange of foreign currencies, no restrictions, no remittances. So these are the main, uh, uh, so again, the general information about uh, Armenia, the land ownership, so uh, how much ownership permitted, stabilization clause, uh, equal treatment. Uh, next, please. Uh, uh, so, uh, mainly, uh, uh, again, uh, so investments, uh, which are the main investments uh, from which countries? So here you can see the list of countries uh, and double taxation and prevention of fiscal evasion. Uh, later, we are going to share also this presentation with all the interested parties, so that's why I would not like to uh, focus that focus that much. So uh, access to market. Well, uh, uh, again, uh, so GSP regime is operating in Armenia with Japan, Canada, Ireland, Norway uh, for about 300, uh, 3,500 products. Uh, then Armenia uh, is member of Eurasian Economic Union, as you know, which uh, uh, comprises uh, 180 million uh, consumers. Uh, and uh, uh, so it's a uh, European Economic uh, Union. So it's since 2015, Armenia is a member of this union. And uh, so we have uh, tax free uh, relations with uh, member countries. Mm -hmm. Well, major export destinations. So total export in 2020. Nine made uh, so uh, three billion twenty two million uh, USD and main uh, so export countries uh, are well presented here and also the percentage the share mm -hmm. we can go ahead Irina. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, which are the main high export potential products uh, in Armenia? First, it's uh, the agriculture, so fruits and vegetables, processed foods, water and beverages, textile, jewelry, uh, and pharmaceuticals. So main six branches uh, that have export uh, potential in Armenia and uh, from which export is uh, made to other countries with the highest potential of exports. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Well, so general taxation re regime. Uh, so uh, income tax is 21%, corporate tax 18%, and value added tax 20%. Uh, 20%. So this is the general tax system uh, in Armenia. Mm -hmm. Well, textile industry of Armenia. So we go little by little. So history of Armenian textile industry is one of the uh, all these branches of Armenian economy, which has uh, rich traditions, rich history. Well, uh, the tr traditions were developed and this industry had a significant uh, growth, especially during Soviet times. In the Soviet economy, Armenia was one, uh, was one of the largest suppliers of textiles, knitwear, and also uh, footwear, with almost 150,000 employees. Uh, then in the 1980s, Armenia became one of the largest centers of the USSR textile industries. So the main uh, cities in Armenia producing uh, textile and garments were Gimri, Van Azor, until now uh, these uh, cities, and of course Yerevan, until now these cities continue the best traditions uh, uh, with, of course, better innovative companies. Uh, there are also among them some newly established companies. Yes, we can go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, clothing sector of Armenia. So uh, it's like, uh, you know, uh, Irina, I'm sorry, I, there is just one square which, uh, uh, which somehow prohibits to see also the general info. Yeah, this one is like prohibits and I, I cannot see. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. The clothing sector, according to the Statistical Committee of the Republic of Armenia, so Wearing apparel, there is outerwear is 37%, uniform 19%, underwear 2%, and other sportwear, head clothing for newborn babies and other kind of products, 24%. And knitted corjuted apparel, hoisury 9%, and knitwear clothing makes 9%. Mm -hmm. 
I can go ahead. A number of enterprises and employees uh, in the clothing sector. Uh, so now a uh, number of employees, so makes approximately 8,000 uh, employees, but it's, it keeps growing with years. And uh, uh, as you can see also further in the presentation, uh, so it keeps growing and uh, we anticipate having up to uh, double uh, of this number in the upcoming uh, years. Mm -hmm. So according to the official statistics, clothing production volume, uh, so it uh, rose to AMD 40.6 billion in 2021, which is 30% more than in 2020. So after COVID, so uh, the sector keeps growing uh, with significant, uh, so with rapid growth. And uh, so about 95 of uh, textile experts, experts go to, to two products groups, so by expert and by production volume. So by expert, these are articles of apparel and clothing, accessories, uh, not knitted or crocheted. So this belongs to uh, 69%. And articles of apparel and clothing, accessories, knitted or crocheted, this, uh, they make 25%. And uh, by production volume, Clothing production makes uh, uh, 40.5 billion AMD and production of textile products 1.9 billion AMD. Mm -hmm. Okay. And exports uh, by countries. Uh, so uh, you can see that uh, the majority, so these are main export destinations for Armenia. And uh, so uh, these are uh, EU countries, Russia, and other markets. So uh, but uh, so here you can see also by the graph uh, percentage of export destinations. So, so which are the main export destinations for Armenia? Mm -hmm. So it's mainly like EU, and of course, second place it's Russia. It belongs to Russia, and I can say that EU, the majority, uh, the main part belongs to, uh, to Italy. Uh, these are the main companies, uh, world known maybe companies, uh, uh, which are uh, with which contracts are signed, orders implemented, and are uh, or were implemented. Uh, so uh, some of the companies uh, are based in uh, Russia or in other uh, uh, customs union countries. Uh, so among them is uh, Zara, Finflair, Max Mara, Zola, uh, Genu. For, so it's uh, Inditex, some companies of Inditex group, uh, and uh, of course there are also among them Russian companies. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the competitive advantage of the industry? Uh, so uh, here you can see the main list of the competitive advantages of Armenia. It's really production traditions and rich experience, skilled labor force, uh, with uh, relatively low uh, salaries, so uh, relatively low energy costs, uh, unused production capacity with exploitation, which doesn't require large investments, more attractive business environment for outsourcing compared to other Asian market, uh, geographic proximity to so, uh, EA, EU, Europe, and other major market, existence of a large Armenian diaspora worldwide, a uh, successful working experience of Armenian manufacturers with, with well-known brands. So these are main competitive advantages, uh, which makes Armenia uh, so a country uh, worth uh, cooperating with. Next, please. Mm -hmm. So Armenian textile industry development strategy uh, till 2026, uh, it's of course draft, it's not finalized yet, uh, but however, uh, so what is anticipated, increase of the productivity of the sector by 2.7%, the average salary will reach almost uh, 106,000 AMD, which makes approximately uh, 350 USD, uh, expert volumes will amount to, so, uh, uh, 536.9 uh, so billion. The government plans to allocate funds for the participation of local brands and enterprises in international exhibitions. Uh, 
Uh, by the way, here I would like uh, to stress also uh, the importance of the uh, UNIDO project, United Nations Industrial mm -hmm. Development mm -hmm. Organization project, uh, mm -hmm. which is being uh, so realized since uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, thanks to the project, uh, so uh, the experts uh, uh, of the Armenian textile and garment uh, products uh, were almost tripled. Uh, in 2021 and uh, so this uh, project also helps uh, a lot uh, with participation of the Armenian companies in uh, international exhibitions well mainly in Russia and also in other international European events and thanks to this project also uh, light industry training and service center was established in Armenia uh, which is the official representative of Institute of Imota Burko in Armenia, uh, which uh, the um, head office uh, of which is uh, situated in Milan. Uh, so, and uh, we have very close cooperation with this school, and we have our TOTs uh, organized and financed by the project again uh, uh, with the help of this. Uh, so, you need a project. Uh, so we have good, uh, like, uh, we are in on the way of establishing uh, good traditions with working with Italy, Italian school uh, of textile and garment industry. And of course, we hope for better cooperation uh, opportunities with Italian companies. Uh, this is just in between. A scholarship will be allocated for the study of future industry specialists in the leading institutions of the world. This, this is also among governments. Uh, programs. Uh, state uh, compensations of monthly uh, salary for organizations attracting highly skilled specialists, so uh, who is hi highly uh, uh, qualified specialist, state support skills. Uh, so these are mainly salary related information uh, regarding Armenia and also people with higher education and uh, technical education. Uh, and uh, again here, I would like also again to stress the importance of the uh, Space 59 Training and Service Center established in Armenia, which again uh, prepare, helps uh, preparing and filling in the gap of the necessary employees, uh, uh, specialists, uh, so needed by the companies, by the productions uh, all over Armenia. You can go ahead. Uh, so ERDSC is one of the leading Armenian think ta uh, tanks. Uh, it was founded in 2004. It's committed to provide assistance to governmental and regional state bodies, non-governmental organizations, private sector companies in their activities. Uh, uh, so in all their efforts to create safe, secure, and democratic uh, and prosperous uh, so countries. We can go ahead. Uh, so what is uh, the main aim of ERDSC? To support countries' social economic development in a more effective and uh, goal-oriented way, uh, promoting research, providing tools for self-sustainability -sus and self-sufficiency uh, necessary for civil society. And uh, the main vision of ERDSC is uh, that the Republic of Armenia would develop the economy, strong social in infrastructure, where daily life of citizens is stable and self-sufficient. So this is the main uh, uh, vision of, of ERDSC. Mm -hmm. So, and which are uh, the main values of ERDSC? So value employees and their contributions, value employees and uh, apply the highest performance and quality standards, respect people, have unbiased, open, and honest communication and established trustworthy uh, partnerships. We can go ahead. Uh, so which are uh, the main sectors that uh, this organization deals with? It's social development, regional and rural development, SME development, trade and competitiveness, and of course, governance. And uh, the main project, so uh, which were realized uh, through ERDSC, so 
uh, its assessment of export requirements to the EU and compliance, compliance of respective procedures for FREDA target groups, uh, many trainings and consultancy for SMEs, uh, provision of consulting services uh, to SMEs, uh, and uh, we also played uh, in supporting uh, developing business plans, identifying local and foreign market demands, so making market research, uh, support uh, entrepreneurship development of startups, successful start campaigns, analysis of the public policy of the government of Armenia, uh, and sustainable textile related uh, so trainings and workshops, uh, which were all uh, realized uh, thanks to and uh, through uh, ERDSC. And thank you for your attention. So the, I would ask Irina also to share the presentation with all the participants and uh, are also here and listen to the, thank you. Thank you very much, Armine. Uh, it was really very interesting presentation. I think today a lot of us and also uh, a lot of Italian participants learned uh, about the, 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 the Armenia <laughs> and yes, Armenia textile sector. Of course, of course, we will share the presentation with um, with um, pa all participants through the thank you thank you Irene. as Italian as Armenian one and also the recording. If someone uh, who is not ah oh, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to ask if uh, any of participants have any kind of question to uh, to our speakers. Okay, so I think we can move to the next uh, to the next point. I would like to share again with. Um, uh, I would like to share with you the um, the next step of our uh, of our meeting today. We have only thirteen minutes, but I think uh, we can start and then uh, we can finalize the job uh, once we will finish the meeting and at your free time. I would like to share with all of you the link in the um, in the chat. So uh, we would like to ask you to go to Miro and uh, uh, start to work on this word. So as you can see from my screen here, you can see the main spheres of cooperation that have been identified by you uh, during the first preliminary, uh, first preliminary call. And um, now we would like to ask you to take these uh, stick notes and, all, and to, um, to take these stick notes and to describe into the details uh, on the basis of your previous choices, what, how exactly you would like to uh, start the cooperation in that specific sector. So please let me ask you if everything works. Can you, can you enter? Otherwise, wait a second. I will share one more time the link. So someone managed to to enter to the platform. Just open your mic and uh, confirm us. Okay. So here on this uh, on this page, you can see the post-its. So just take it and uh, you can zoom it and just start to uh, to write. Um, and just to start to write your ideas on the on the cooperation opportunities in the following spheres. Uh, of course, the board will be integrated into the Moodle platform. So even after this call, you will be able to you will be able to to work on it. I see the uh, I think I see the uh, confirmation in the chat that. Uh, you can access the board. 
So let's wait a couple of minutes. Does every one of you was able to to enter? Because we don't, I don't see no one here. So just give me the confirmation. Irina, hi. Sorry. Uh, do we have to sign up or log in to this Miro then to because it's view only file for me? Oh, okay. One second, please. I think, um, yeah, at this point, I would like to ask you to log in if it's not a problem. Otherwise, we will, um, we can switch this exercise for the next time. So- Okay, it's re it requires a Google account. I have one, so it's not a problem. Okay, if for anyone else is also not a problem, And sorry, here is a question about what's your role? Company management, change management, project management? Mm, wherever you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in. Okay, perfect. I see also some other participants are in. So let's wait uh, another few couple of minutes. Okay, I see more people designing. If everyone is clear how the tool works. No, <laughs> can you please help? Sure, so. <laughs> Because uh, we haven't time to read it, <laughs> the help book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. So uh, with your mouse, if you have a mouse, you just need to zoom. And mm -hmm. then you will see the post-it here. Yeah. Okay. You can take it and move it in the in the um, middle of the square. Mm -hmm. Clicking two times, you can start to write. And for example, you can write whatever you want. 
for example, and then just leave the, you can make it bigger or smaller and just leave it here. So, mm -hmm. and later on you can zoom out. So for example, you can make this stick notes smaller. You can zoom out or zoom in mm -hmm. and, um, and that's, uh, is that clear? I see yes. someone yes. here also much. designing the, the note. Okay. So I think at least for the luxury boutiques, we have already two stick notes. So it seems that you are uh, interested in, maybe later on we'll ask uh, our participants to describe a bit more if we'll have the time. Let's wait a f another few uh, couples of minutes. If someone have any question or you do not understand how it's work, just please let me know. <laughs> Okay, let's read some of them. Since the time is approaching, so for luxury boutiques, we have luxury boutiques customers lo loyalty scheme and sales management, find customers for very high quality handmade textile and find customers for high quality uh, uh, for high quality products. So um, for those who wrote these notes, and I think it's also um, it relates to eight year event, uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more. Maybe uh, are you interested also only in find the um, in only find the, the customers, or you are also interested in the cooperation with another uh, organization, companies in Italy who are producing the luxury um, luxury textile? Of course, um, I'm interested in cooperation. This, the, this is the first <laughs> uh, issue I want to solve and why not to find customers? Perfect. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Also, we have fashion show participation and uh, meetings uh, towards consumer fashion design inter uh, industry. Very interesting. Later on, we have international partnership and we have international cooperation. Wait, give me a second. I will try to, to zoom. Okay, so. Okay. 
uh, international cooperation for the purpose of developing Armenia light industry se sector. Um, very nice, very, very interesting. Who, uh, Gora, uh, if I'm pronouncing well, sorry for my pronunciation. Can you tell us a bit more about this? I'm so sorry. Uh, do you mean my name, Kohar? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry for the pronunciation since the beginning. You know? <laughs> it's okay. What would you like to hear from me? Can you repeat, please? Yeah. I mean, uh, how you see the um, the international cooperation for the purpose of developing Armenian light industry sector? Okay. Uh, let me introduce once more, as my colleague Armina told you, uh, we represent UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Armenian project on light industry modernization. So now we all we are already in the project, in the process of developing Armenian uh, production companies in textile, clothing, footwear, and leather. What are, how do we do? I will mention two practical ways. The first one is that we unite the Armenian companies involved in the light industry sphere and introduce them abroad in the exhibitions, fairs, and workshops under one Armenian umbrella brand called 5900 BC, which is also created under the UNIDO project. And if needed, we serve as intermediary in cooperation between Armenian and foreign companies that we come across in uh, exhibitions or if we find them ourselves. So every time we find them, uh, respective foreign company uh, that can assist us in enhancing our Armenian uh, production. We involve them, we attract them and invite them to Armenia, uh, both offline or online, uh, however it is possible, to make their suggestions, corrections uh, on uh, how to improve the Armenian sphere of light industry, clothing, clothing and footwear. This is, uh, we uh, launched our project in 2014, so it is already for eight years that our uh, UNIDO project tries to connect all the companies of the sphere and to uh, introduce them abroad and develop their production and processes in Armenia. So, and if you ask us how uh, can we uh, continue the international partnership, it is the same way as we have done already. I think in contact with the foreign company, exploring them and trying to find mutual interests in mutual development. Thank you very much. I have a question on this matter. So might you be interested in the collaboration with, uh, for example, Italian regional authorities or large BSOs, business supporting organizations? For sure. For sure, we are interested. Perfect. And we would like to, yeah, to connect with them online or offline, uh, however it is possible. Okay, thank you very much. I think to together with the uh, pin, uh, we will try to okay. we'll try to to find some uh, some way for you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, also, I see here uh, the reply from Taverik. Again, sorry for my pronunciation. Hello, I'm interested in finding suppliers of high quality natural fabrics as well as establish cooperation with Italian designers. Very, very interesting, and I think it's also with uh, in line with luxury boutiques uh, part. So at this point, um, I would like to encourage you to continue to uh, write down on the board because we will publish it and we will keep it uh, alive during the whole duration of the project. So in case maybe someone can uh, find some interesting idea from what you are writing and that can encourage the cooperation. Unfortunately, we are out of the time and uh, I'm really apologize for that. I think uh, we can switch the la uh, the latest part of the presentation of Italian and uh, uh, Armenian organization for the last uh, third meeting, and we can keep it for 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 that. And um, then we will uh, then we will have the, the the broader number of public to exchange also the what uh, what we are doing. I would like to encourage all of you, and I would like to highlight that participation in the third meeting is very very very. 
uh, requested from your side because it will be the meeting where we will try to give you all the details, logistical aspects, and all uh, other other issue. I would like to thank you for the participation, for participants, and for uh, and for our partners for their presentation and their contribution. Armina, uh, Federica, would you like to say something? Uh, thank you. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, Federica, go on. No, no, I, I was reading. I was reading them. See you to the third meeting. Thank you, Federica. You can share our presentation. Sure, I will. Armina. Yes, thank you very much, Irina. I think it was uh, well another uh, useful meeting uh, for the participants, and I think so. We are close also, yeah, to finalizing also uh, the participants, and uh, so the next step will be, I think, that and everyone will be informed about. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Armina. Uh, please uh, keep an eye on your emails because. Uh, starting from today, will, you will receive from our side some emails with approvals, with some logistical aspects and information as from our side, as from the side of uh, Armenian partners. So, uh, so, yeah. So on this stage, thank you very much and see you next Thursday at the same time, same link, same place. Thank you. Bye-bye.